Hello everyone, welcome back to Corporate Wala, the channel which helps you get your dream job. Today I am back with another exciting video and in today's video, we are going to look at some of the most important Excel function which you should master before going for your next Accenture, Genpec, TCS or EXL MNC interview. If you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any such important videos in future as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first and most important function which we are going to look today is VLOOKUP. Now what do you mean by VLOOKUP? It stands for vertical lookup and it is used to find specific information within a large data set. How do we use VLOOKUP? You have to type VLOOKUP bracket open lookup value comma table array comma column index number comma range lookup and bracket close. Now here how it works. Your lookup value is going to be your value which you want to search for. Your table array is going to be the range from where you want to search for the lookup value. The column index number refers to the column number in the table array from which the result should be returned and the range of lookup is an optional field where you have to type true or one for approximate match or zero or false for exact match. Let's deep dive into this a furthermore. So your formula will look like something like this. Here you can see your lookup value is the value. What do you want to look for? Then the table array is the value. Where do you want to look for it? The column index number value is going to be the value. If you find it, how many columns to the right do you want to get the value from? So there is one limitation of VLOOKUP formula. It can only find the value from the right side of the lookup value. If you have any value which is in the left side, it won't be able to find it. Then you have the range lookup, which is do you want an exact match or approximate match? Okay, so this was the breakdown of the formula. It is very important to understand the formula because you won't be able to remember it no matter how much hard you try. Now let's look at some of the example how we can use the VLOOKUP formula in our day to day work. So let's take one example. Imagine you have a table of employee information with their names and corresponding salaries. You want to find out the salary of an employee named Chandler. Using VLOOKUP, you can do it very easily. So what you have to do is type VLOOKUP, press tab. Now your brackets are open. Next thing it wants us to select is lookup value. So what do we want to look for? Chandler's salary. So my lookup value is Chandler. I'll just now click on the comma. Now it is asking for the table array. So what was my table array? The value from where we want to get the data. So my table array is going to be this table from where I want to get the data. Then I'll again press the comma. Now column index number. So column index number was my column from where I want to get the data. So here this is my name section and this is my salary section. So where is my salary in the column number one, two. So I'll type the column number two because I want to get to know the salary of Chandler. Then I'll again press the comma. Now it is asking me true for approximate match and false for exact match. Now what is approximate match? You don't want the exact salary number, but you want an approximate number. But if you select false, you will get the exact number which is mentioned in the table. So I want the exact salary of Chandler. So what I'll do is I'll type false or I can type zero. So I'll type zero and then close the bracket and then hit enter. You can see I have got the salary of Chandler, which is 50,000. If you want to check, we can check it here. Here is his name Chandler and his salary is 50,000. So our formula is working fine. Let's check for the Joey as well. So what we have to do is again is equals to we look up, hit the tab. Now we have to select the lookup value, which is my name Joey. Then again, I'll click on comma. The table array is the value from where we want to get the data. I have selected it. Then again, comma, my salary is in column index number two. So I'll click on number two, then comma. And then I want the exact salary of Joey. So I will press zero and close the bracket and hit enter. So I have got the salary of Joey as well. Now, if I want salary of Phoebe, I can again use the VLOOKUP formula. But what I'll do is I'll just press Ctrl and D 
and it will drag down the formula from up above to the bottom here. You can see PB salary is 72,000 in the formula and if you will go back and check, yes, it is 72,000. So it is working fine. Now some of you might be thinking why we are using VLOOKUP formula. We have the names here. We can get the data from directly here. Why we are using a formula? So let me explain. I have just given you the small table because I want you to understand the formula first. Let's suppose now we have a bigger table. Now if you want to find a particular number or let's suppose you want to update number from here to another workbook where you have so many records to update. Let's suppose of 100 employees. What you will do? We will find for each of them one by one? No. So in that case, what we will do is we will use the VLOOKUP formula. Let's suppose if I need to find the salary of Rachel, what I will do is is equals to we look up bracket open now look up value is my Rachel then I'll click the comma table array is my this table I'll select it then again comma my salary is again in column number two I'll press two here then comma and the range of lookup is I want exact match so I'll click zero and close the bracket it will give me the Rachel salary which is 68,000 we can see it here as well and again I can drag it down here and it will give me the raw salary as well. But pressing this control D won't work if your data set is not in a table range. Let me explain it by giving you another example. Currently it is a table form but let's suppose we have data in not a table form. Okay now if I'll use the VLOOKUP formula again for Rachel from this data set and then I press 2 press 0 bracket close enter so it is giving me Rachel salary. I'll press control D. It is giving me raw salary as well. But you can see in the Rachel salary, my range is from I2 till J44. But in Ross case, you can see my range is dropped down by one column. So what I have to do is I'll just use the formula again. We look up Rachel, comma, my table array. I'll select this table array. Then I won't press comma here. What I'll do is I'll press F4. You can see as soon as I press the F4, I can see some dollar signs. So what those dollar signs represent? This is the freezing of our range. Now, even if we drag the formula range below, it won't change the range of selection. Then I'll press the comma. Then column next number is 2. Then 0 and close the bracket. Hit enter. You can see my value is correct here. Okay. My range is selecting entire data. If I drag it down, it is again selecting my whole data. If I drag down even more, it will select the exact same range. So if I want to get to know the salary of Monica, I can just type her name here and you can see I'm getting her salary. If there is a table, there won't be any issue. It will auto freeze the range. But the data set from where you are getting the value is not a table range. You have to press F4 for freezing the data range. OK, so I hope this formula is clear to you. Now let's talk about the second formula, which is our going to be sum if. Now, what do you mean by sum if? Sum if lets you sum in one range based on a specific criteria you look for in another range. Let me explain you a little more. So how this formula will look like is equals to sum if range comma criteria comma sum range. So here how it works. So your range refers to the range of cells that you want to evaluate against the condition. Your criteria is the condition that will determine which cell will be included while summing the total data and the sum range is an optional column it refers to the range of cells containing the values you want to add up if you omit this excel will add the value in the range that meet the specific criteria let us deep dive a little more on this formula so your formula will look like something like this sum if bracket open range comma criteria comma sum range so your range is what range do you want to look at your criteria is what value text or number do you want to look for and the sum range is the value for each match found what range do you want to sum for let us understand this formula with the help of an example so let's suppose i have this data set and if i filter on the name of rachel i can see in this data set I have Rachel written four times. Okay. Now let's suppose if I want to check how many total payment we have made to Rachel, what I can do is 
I can simply come here, filter on her name and check what is the total amount which we have paid to Rachel. But let's suppose if we want to prepare a report where we want to get to see some paid to number of employees, what do we do? Should we come again and filter or we can create a formula which will submit for us. So in those cases, SUMIF will work fine for us. How we can use SUMIF? So you have to simply type is equals to sum if press tab it will now open the bracket now it is asking us for selection of the range so what was my range again my range was what range do you want to look at okay so i want to look the range from this table so i have selected it then i'll press comma now it is asking me for the criteria what is the criteria based on which i want to sum so I want to get to know the salary of Rachel, which we have total paid to her. So I'll just select the cell where the criteria is mentioned. Then again, I'll press the comma. Now the formula wants us to select the sum range from where we want to get the data. So my salary paid is here in this B column. I'll select this B column entirely and then I'll press the bracket close and hit enter. So you can see I have got the salary which we have paid to Rachel, which is exactly the same which I have showed you earlier. Similarly, let's suppose if you want to find out the salary paid to Ross, what you have to do, just click is equals to sum if tab, it will ask you for the range, just select the range from where you want to get the data, then comma, criteria is this time my Ross, I'll select it, press comma and the sum range is going to be my B column. I'll select it, close the packet and press enter. So it will give me the salary of Ross. Now, if you want to cross check it, you can do it by simply going here, filter on Ross name. And you can see we have total $1,80,000, which was exactly the amount we have calculated using the sum if formula. Similar to this, let's suppose if we want to find out the value we paid to Chandler or Joey, what we can do is just copy their name here, drag the formula and you will see we have paid this much money to these two people as well. Okay, so this was our sum if. Now let's talk about our next formula, which is going to be our sum ifs. Okay, so what is my sum ifs? So see, last one was sum if. It is sum ifs. Sum ifs is same as sum if, but it lets you use multiple criteria. What it means is in sum if we have selected based on the only one criteria, but in sum ifs you can select more than one criteria. So if you want to apply sum ifs, what you have to do is equals to sum ifs bracket open sum range comma criteria range one comma criteria one comma criteria range 2 comma criteria 2 and so on you can define multiple criteria and it will work fine okay let's see how it works so your sum range refers to the range of cells that will be summed then your criteria range is the range from where you want to check the first condition and your criteria one is the value or condition which you want to find in criteria range 1. Similar to this, criteria range 2 will be the range from where you want to check the second condition and criteria 2 will be the value or condition which you want to find in criteria range 2. Okay, now let's deep dive a little more on this and we can see your formula will look like something like this. Now, your sum range is the value which you want to sum. Criteria range 1 is the first range to look for matches. Criteria 1 is your first criteria which you want to match. Criteria range 2 is the second range to look for in matches. And your criteria 2 will be the criteria which you want to find out in the criteria range 2. Let's see the practical implication of sum ifs formula. So we have again this table where we have given the name of employees, the season in which they have worked and the salary paid in each of the seasons. If we want to find out what is the total amount we have paid to Rachel for season 3? What we have to do is just click is equals to sum ifs, then press tab. Now it is asking for the sum range. So what is sum range? 
summary range is the value which we want to sum. So this is the total salary column. I will select it. Then again, press comma. Criteria range one, which is my first criteria range. This is the name. So I'll select the criteria range one. Then press comma. Then criteria one is the name of the person which I want to sum for. So it is here. I'll select it. Again, press comma. Now. What is my second criteria? I wanted to get to know what is the total amount we have paid to Rachel for season three. So my second criteria should be the season. So I'll select the season range by selecting this column, then press comma. Then I have to select the criteria range two. So for which season I want to get to know her salary, which is my season three. So I'll select season three, close the bracket, hit enter, and you can see. I have got the value one lakh forty nine thousand eight hundred dollar. Let's suppose I want to get the value for season two. What I'll do is just drag this formula, and you can see in season two we have paid total one lakh twenty seven thousand one hundred dollar to her. If you want to cross check if our formula is working fine or not, let's filter on her name. Then select the season you want to check for. So I'll select the season three. You can see. In season three, we have paid her total one lakh forty nine thousand eight hundred, which is exactly the value we have calculated using the sum ifs formula. Okay, let's suppose if you want to find out the salary of Ross for season one, what you will do? Just click is equals to sum ifs bracket open, then sum range, which is my this column, comma. Criteria range, which is my this column, comma. Criteria one is my Ross, comma. Criteria two range is my season, and criteria two is my season one for Ross. I'll close the bracket, hit enter, and I can see I have got the value of two lakh fourteen thousand rupees, which we have paid to Ross in season one. So this was our third formula, which you should master. I will share the link of this Excel sheet in the description of this video. So if you want. You can practice yourself as well and check if you are getting the correct numbers or not. Let's talk about our next formula, which is going to be if. Now, what do you mean by if? If statements allow you to make logical comparison between conditions. An if statement generally says that if one condition is true, do something; otherwise, do something else. Now, you must be thinking, what is this if formula? Let me show you in detail. If bracket open, logical test, comma. If value is true, what you should do. If value is false, what you should do. Okay. Now here how it works. Logical test is the condition that you want to evaluate. If value is true, what is the result that you want? It will show it here. And if value is false, what is the result you want to get? It will show it here. If we deep down a little more, you can see. Your logical test is the criteria. What do you want to compare? Your if value is true, value you want in return if it meets the criteria, and your value is false, value you want to return otherwise. So I know it is getting little bit complicated, but we will be able to understand it easily when we will go again and check the example. So we have this data set where in the column A. We have given the name of the person in the column B. We have given the salary which we have paid to them, and in column C, we are getting this net payable amount. So we are allowed to pay only fifty thousand rupees at one time. But you can see we have paid sixty eight thousand five hundred seventy four thousand two hundred. So which is more than fifty thousand. That's why we are getting here negative values, and here we have paid less than fifty thousand. So here we are getting positive values. Now your task is to provide me this data, all the negative amounts in this column, which is column D, all the positive amounts in this column, which is my column E. How will you do it? Will you type it like eighteen thousand five hundred, then twenty four thousand two hundred, and if you come down here and you see, okay, thirteen hundred. Will you do it like this? Answer is no. What you can do is. Instead of typing it manually, what you can do is you can use the if function here. Let me show you how. You will just press is equals to 
if bracket open by pressing the tab now logical test it is asking for so i want if this value is more than zero then it will give me this value which is my column c but if it is less than zero i want this column to be blank and if you want to keep anything blank what you have to do just simply type two inverted commas you can see i have typed two inverted commas but i have not typed anything here okay then again i want in this column the negative amount so what you will do is is equals to if open the bracket now again my logical test if this amount is less than zero then what i want is i want to get this amount in e column and if it is not less than zero what i want it to do is show this column as blank i'll close the bracket press enter and you can see i have got the values which is all the negative values in this column and i just typed this formula on the first column but it dragged the formula in entire table because i am using the table here if you will do it in non table columns what you have to do is again your formula will be same if logical test is this value is greater than 0 then what i want is this value else i want this to be blank close the bracket hit enter you can see i am getting blank here i'll select this data range come till the down here and i'll press control d it will give me all the positive values in this column okay if i want the negative values what i can do is just simply press equals to if bracket open logical test if this value is less than 0 then show me this value else give me a blank column press enter you can see i have got this value which is my negative value here again i want to drag this formula till the very down what i'll do is i just press shift and down arrow key and then when i have selected entire range i'll just select control d it will give me the values here so this was all about if function moving ahead to our next function which is going to be if error so what do you mean by if error formula let us quickly check it out you can use if error function to trap and handle errors in a formula if error returns a value you specify if a formula evaluates to an error otherwise it returns the result of the formula i know it is complicated while we are reading it but when i'll show you the use case of this formula you will going to love this formula it is a life saver while you are preparing any report i'll show you how okay so how you will use this formula you will just type is equals to if error bracket open value comma value if error so if there is any error in the value what do you want it to return that will be the use of this formula okay so how it works value is the calculation or formula you want to evaluate so what you want to check what value do you want to check is going to be your value and the value if error is the thing which you want in return if you find any error in the result okay so if we deep dive a little more you can see value is what do you want to evaluate and value if error is output you want to display in case of error okay let us see this by an example so do you recall this table from our earlier example where we have calculated or where we have find out the salary of different employees from a data set or a table range so here i have found out the salary of chandler by using view lookup formula same for joy and same for phoebe but let's suppose i want salary of ankit and i'll drag the formula it is showing me hash na what it means is i am not getting any value for ankit why is that because in this data set from where i am using the view lookup formula i don't have any name called ankit that's why when i'm trying to view lookup this formula 
I am not getting anything in return. If I am preparing a report, let's suppose I have these names as well and I am dragging these formula till down here. If I am preparing a report or presentation, if there is something which is not available in the above cell or above data set and it will show NA, you can see my report won't look good, right? What I want is if there is any NA, it should replace it with zero. So what I can do is I'll show you first separate formula here. What I'll do is I'll just type is equals to if error tab which will open my bracket then value I'll select this value comma then if error what I want to return is zero I'll type zero bracket close hit enter you can see I have got zero because I have got NA here instead of Rachel if I type Rahul here and again if I bring this formula here I'll see I'm getting zero again but what will happen if I post this here I am getting this value why because my formula says if there is no error it will return me the value which is available in this column okay now we can combine VLOOKUP and IF ERROR because I want the data in this set only okay so what I will do is I have this VLOOKUP formula I'll come in front of this I'll use IF ERROR now the value which I want to get is this value okay then I press comma and if I find any error in this formula what I want it to return is press comma and hit zero and then enter you can see nothing change here why because Chandler is available in the above table but now you can see the magic if I will drag this formula down you can see now it is showing me zero instead of an error this is the use case of if error formula i hope you found this video useful if you did do like it subscribe to my channel if already haven't and if you have any doubts or query feel free to ask me in the comments thank you for watching i will see you soon with another video